What's the uh, best part about being a writer for you? What do you really look forward to, say, on this project or some of your other projects? <laughs> I don't even know. Um, <laughs> it's something I get up and do and um, enjoy doing. Um, sometimes it's stressful and sometimes it's, um, you know, your, your viscera get involved with it and you get jittery and upset, but um, it's, it's a job of work. It's um, a job, it's, it's challenging and a pleasure and it's something, the hardest thing for me to, to come to terms with early was that you're always a failure. I mean, you establish the bar at how high and how good a failure you can create because even the greatest poems have limitations. I mean, we could sit and talk about the limitations of King Lear if we wanted to, but that doesn't mean that it's not a great work. But I'm sure that if we asked Shakespeare, he would acknowledge there were things in it he would like to redo, rethink, things that made him unhappy. Mm -hmm. That's a, um, I guess, goes maybe with the theme of the book being a little bit negative. Mm -hmm. You know, the idea of it's always going to be a failure. What about it's always also going to be a success? That doesn't seem to be the what motivates you. That there's al that there's always going to be really successful lines. You'll get a really good line mm -hmm. and think, go around quoting it. Um, I did not to quote my own lines, but I will <laughs> quote other people's lines if I can remember them, which I don't always. And usually I remember the dirty ones better than the uh, clean ones. So I can't ask you to share. Today. No, <laughs> you really can't. The, um, but unless you like really filthy limericks on, on air. The, um, but I don't know that things can, failure, I mean both success and failure are, are infinite, I suppose. But it seems to me we're more likely to veer off into Failure seems a deeper hole than success seems high as a mountain. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the uh, best writing job you've had? You mentioned that you were a teacher of mm -hmm. uh, sixth graders. Uh, I don't know how much writing was involved in that, but what's none? None. Okay. Except <laughs> detention cards. I wrote <laughs> detention cards. <laughs> okay. What uh, What really helped prepare you to be a writer uh, when you were younger? Reading. You know, um, I was one of those people that just sucked down um, words. My brother and I had fist fights over who got to read the cereal box at breakfast. Hmm. He would turn the back of it toward him, I would turn the back of it toward me, and then we would be rolling across the floor fighting about who got to do the reading. Um, you know, I would pick up anything. I'd go to the library, whatever it had, I read. Um, and you really can't be a writer unless you have an awful lot of, um, I mean, just think of what reading gives you. It gives you the words, it gives you all the sentence structures, it gives you the stories, it gives you a sense of the psychology of the relationship between you and a, a reader, and um, between you as a reader and that writer. Um, th there's no way you can become a, uh, a, a writer without being a reader. Okay. Is your brother a writer now? I mean, no, he's a doctor. He's a doctor? Okay. <laughs> well, he writes uh, prescriptions, things I'm like sure that. I'm sure he yeah. does. <laughs> uh, what would you do if you weren't a writer, you weren't a professor? What's your fallback career? <laughs> I don't know that I would have one. Um, I would love to be a folk singer, except I can't play guitar or sing. Okay. And, um, and that's, you know, I'd love to be a painter, except I can't paint. The, um, uh, my interests, I mean, are in, in artistic things, um, but um, this is the thing that I can do. Okay. Um, I don't know, I wondered sometimes about sales. I hate being dependent on other people's decisions as you are as a salesman, mm -hmm. but so many of the salesmen I see pay no attention to the psychology of the people they're dealing with, whereas a writer, you have to be aware of how the reader's brain works. Mm -hmm. So I, in a way, I, well, I wonder about that. I wonder if a writer is a version of a salesman. Hmm. Could be. What uh, genre haven't you written that you'd like to try? You've got uh, a s series of essays called The Glass Anvil. Mm -hmm. out, and then you've got these six books of poetry. What else? Um, 
I like writing personal essays, um, and I'm in, and um, I always wondered what it would be like to write a humor column. You know, something that came on a regular like basis. Like Dave Barry. Like Dave like Barry or Gene Weingarten at the Washington Post, or uh, something like. Thurber. Um, mm -hmm. um, I don't know quite um, who does those um, anymore. Um, there's one guy, the political guy, whose name's not going to come to me. Okay. And um, but you know, newspapers really don't have those humor columnists mm -hmm. anymore. I guess people are doing it online now. Right, well, you've been on Slate online. Uh, yes. You had a poem on Andrew. Serrano, I think. Yes, uh, uh, I may not be getting uh, uh, Andre Serrano, um, who had that photograph called "Piss Christ" of um, a crucifix in a um, a vat of cow's blood and urine, and it was a very controversial photograph, right. as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was um, a gorgeous photograph and um, a theologically powerful statement. Okay. And but so you're but you're making the move you're to online. You're seeing mm -hmm. poetry online, and what do you think of the future of that? Uh, as I a publication? don't know. I mean, I grew up as a print guy. I love the feel of holding the book in my hand. Um, I wonder what it would be like to read poems on a Kindle, to be able to take it and hold it in my hand. Um, the reading experience online is complicated because. 2,000 words is going to seem very long online, mm -hmm. and um, on the page it's short. It's just, you know, printed out, it's four or five pages. Online, that seems like an eternity. So people have argued that um, publishing on the web is kind of the perfect forum for poetry. Maybe so, because I find myself reading more and more poems on online, but even that scattered, you don't sit down and read 60 pages of a single author's work as you do when you're sitting down with somebody's book. Mm -hmm. So it's a different experience than what I'm trying to trying to understand. Mm -hmm. And you can't take a uh, take the Kindle to the bathtub. You I know, suppose if you there's could, a slippery but hand, you wouldn't want to drop it. Right, yeah, it's a big problem. That will be the next book of. Uh, but we've all <laughs> dropped books in the tub, haven't right. we? Yeah. And got those wrinkly pages. <laughs> What's your secret vice of an author or a genre? What would surprise people that you read? I mean, with some of the writings, I, uh, I suspect that your uh, your reading g goes pretty far afield. Mm -hmm. But what's something that uh, would you think would surprise people that you read? I doubt that it would surprise people that I'm a sucker for hard-boiled um, detective fiction. Mm -hmm. I've been rereading and um, Richard Stark, which is Donald Westlake's mm -hmm. um, one of his um, pseudonyms, and um, and so he's got that character, Parker, who's a real hard-nosed, um, murderous mm -hmm. um, criminal. And I'm very fond of those. Um, it just came out as a car cartoon. Yeah, a I've got that and I haven't read it yet. Yeah. 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 And um, uh, history, I read a lot of history. Um, but that probably, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. I was hoping for Harlequin people. romance or something. Uh, no. Along the no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Never. <laughs> Uh, how about we end with you reading uh, one more poem out of that? Uh, sh shut up your fine there under your leg. And I would uh, um, love to. Right. Um, this is a poem um, beautifully illustrated by um, Barry Moser of Exploding Squirrels. Um, I, if you're a gardener, you hate squirrels. Um, and all of the poems that I know celebrate squirrels. The Circus and the Trees. I love to watch the gray squirrels leap from limb to leafy limb, tumbling like furry acrobats, and every tree their gym. The oak limbs are their trampoline, and their trapeze the pines. They stroll like tightrope walkers up the looping power lines, and sometimes they gnaw through a line, exploding as it arcs, and lighting up the evening sky, cascading down as sparks. And that will do it for the squirrels in your garden. So I thank you, Professor Andrew Hudgens from the Ohio State University Creative Writing Program for coming in and talking to me on Writer's Talk today. Thank you, Doug.